Hello there, what is going on? You're a part of the A game with Rob Akampora, that would be me. Welcome to the inaugural episode via Shared Universe here in Asbury Park. My first guest will be this man uh, to my left, Ming Chen. What's up, everybody? How are you? How are you doing, man? I'm doing really good. How are you? Very good. We're going to get into a lot of things over the next half hour, so I think we're going to go a little longer. I got a funny feeling because you've already warned me. Half hour goes pretty quick, doesn't it? It's like the snap of a finger. It's not even. Um, <laughs> it's not even funny. Uh, yeah, we always laugh. I was, you know, I'm, we we work a lot with Kevin Smith. Right. And they're like, oh, we're gonna give him an hour for his Q and A. Like, Good luck with that. <laughs> okay. The man goes a minimum of three hours. I'm learning this. Okay. Yeah, so, so I've been forewarned in this. Yeah. I mean, if you want me to talk faster and, and give you short answers, I can. No, that wouldn't work. I don't think. No. Call it a hunch. No, not at all. Well, this is sort of my first foray into being in front of the camera, other than my friends from a um, <laughs> doing another podcast. And uh, hold on to your shorts, guys. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Hang on That's to your led shorts. me to here. Yeah. Hang on to your shorts. Hang on to your shorts. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell there's a little nerves kicking in right now? Because I'm so used to, I'm a radio guy. And then suddenly you put a camera in front of me. It's like going, oh, my God, what am I doing? I didn't think you got nervous, dude. So Believe it or not. Oh, the first hour before this was launching. Right. Oh, my God. Oh, were you puking? No, no, you no, no. Up? That did did awesome. I feel my stomach trying to go, hey, how are you? What's yeah. going on? It's normal. I come to that conclusion. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could do you can do what Kevin Smith does. He smokes weed. <laughs> like a lot of weed before he does. I wish I had thought of that ahead of time. Yeah. Well, then you have to get the weed. It's a whole mess. It's not legal here. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's okay. Just, you know, you're going to have to roll without the weed. All right. I'll roll without the weed. But yeah. I, you know what? Just to, just to get myself, my bearings together. As okay. a radio guy, I haven't been on the air in a long time. So it's been a while. So if I were on the air, I'd probably be talking about some of the things that are happening in social media. So I want to start there because there's oh. three things that caught my attention. Okay. First, I'm going to post this uh, viral video, or I should say Ming's about to do that for me. This okay. comes from uh, Rick and Maria Garino. They're out in Freehold. And this suddenly went viral within the last week. Uh, as a matter of fact, all the New York news stations picked up on the story. Yes. And, um, well, let's do the video. I'll, okay. do, I'll do some play-by-play as the video is uh, running okay. here. Here we go. And um, this is part of the... Re on this thing it should go even more viral it's already had a uh, i think about um, well over 100,000 hits so it's a nice story going on there wow that's great right the other big thing that happened recently put the photo up ming uh wait, wait which one i have two photos yeah give me put the broom up okay there we yeah, go yeah i fell for it okay okay and the funny thing is it stood now there was this whole thing that was going on about allegedly on the one day of the year that you can put this broom put it up on the thing and it's just going to stay there it would defy gravity. Apparently, you can do this anytime. Okay. <laughs> but again, it was one of those things. I saw it on Facebook. It's a Monday night. I'm bored. There's nothing on TV. Let me see if I can do this. All right. I was trying to... Uh, so the, the myth was that the planets had aligned in a certain Correct. configuration yes. on only one day in, in, in centuries, I guess. Right. That the gravitational pull will right. create this phenomenon right. with a broom. Right. And, and then, of course, I get a friend of mine who decides to take this uh, one step further. Um, yeah, there's the other photo. This is from the Del Buno boys. They're down in Ocean County, New the Jersey. The Del Buno boys? Yes. The Mike and Danny. <laughs> now, their, their idea was like going, okay, here's our way of defying gravity. And I got to admit, at first, I'm like going, this is not impressive at all. They're using the ceiling. They're cheating. Right. 
<laughs> but again, I got some crazy people that I know. So going through social media, you find some wild stuff. Oh, is it is it pressed against the ceiling? Yes. There? Can okay, you see? So, yeah. Well, see, I mean, you even thought the same thing for a minute. No, no I thought it was balanced. <laughs> like I've seen, uh, I, I've seen people do this in in real life. They're rodeo clowns, right. Or in the circus. So it can be done. Yeah. Yeah. So so you actually went and got a broom. Mm -hmm. And you balanced it. I, I just literally stuck it on the ground, and it stood there, and I was fascinated for about an hour. And from what I heard, the it, it, you can do this on any day. The bristles yeah. spread out so much mm -hmm. in, in such a way that any broom will balance. And did you go out and buy the broom? Did you go out? No, to, I uh, at least owned the broom. Go to Bed Bath I, I and had, Beyond. No, I didn't have Use to the, buy it. Got the twenty percent. You're coupon. making me feel like I have no life here. Okay, thank you. You weren't alone. <laughs> it's okay. No shame. No shame. Now, if it was Mike Zapsick that went out and did it, yes, okay, I would have laughed point. at him. <laughs> yeah, he's been known to uh, get sucked in by things like this. Um, or I don't know. Are you a Rick and Morty fan at all? Are you familiar with the? Cartoon? Yeah, I'm very familiar with Rick and Morty. They yeah. uh, they did an episode about the Szechuan sauce one time a couple years ago, <laughs> and uh, they were trying to bring back. Uh, it was a little known uh, chicken nugget dipping sauce right. that McDonald's had like 20 years ago. Rick and Morty was trying to bring it back. McDonald's said, "We're we're going to bring it back since everybody wants it back." And what had happened is uh, they underestimated the volume of people that wanted it. Each store got like 10 packets. <laughs> and poor Mike went down to McDonald's on the day it was supposed to launch, found out they were, they were all long sold out, threw a fit in the McDonald's, then went home, threw a fit online oh. on Twitter. Uh, but what, what made me laugh was that he was like, F you McDonald's, where's my Szechuan sauce? <laughs> and he tags the creators of Rick and Morty in there, Justin oh, no. Roiland and Dan Harmon. <laughs> And I see this, and I'm like, dude, you think that they're going to see your tweet and come to your defense? They don't care. They're not even getting paid by, by McDonald's. They're not making a cent off this. So um, so what I did, because I uh, – because like, just this is what I do. I was uh, – I happened to be uh, near a fast food restaurant. I had picked up uh, just a random packet that looked like the Szechuan sauce. Right. And I Photoshopped the Szechuan sauce front on there, and I took a picture with it. Oh, and I'm like, Mike – Dumbass, like I got mine. I don't know why did why did they refuse to give you yours? And I think that made him even madder. Oh. So that's you know this is this is why we're friends. I guess. <laughs> I guess this, this is the reason why why he hasn't killed me. I'm not really sure. But, well, uh, I I think the connections through all your work previously right. may have been the reason. All right, and this is Mike Sapser from Comic Book. Yes, Man. and uh, this is Ming Chen from Comic Book, and uh, also a co-owner of a shared universe podcast. Yeah, absolutely, I, we're definitely going to talk about a shared universe. But sure. I, I, let's go back to the beginnings here okay. because before even you did Comic Book Man, right. How did the connection with Kevin Smith come about? <laughs> it's a good question, Rob. Thank you. I, uh, I'm sure you've seen the movie Clerks. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm slightly familiar with it. Kevin's first movie. Uh, I was going to college at that time, and uh, I was working dead end job at a. It was a video store slash arcade, which was at the Student Union, mm -hmm. and um, I, I took that job. I was like, well, I don't have to work. I'll just play video games all day and rent the occasional movie. Um, but what happened, I, uh, after I got hired, I found out the boss was never there, and he kept all the video games locked, and he had the only key. Uh -huh. So if I wanted to play video games on the clock, I would have to pay for them, thus negating my minimum wage paycheck. <laughs> so I was like, well, this sucks. So I would just sit there and read magazines all day. And uh, we had a big screen TV that only worked on one station. It was uh, MTV. So I watched a lot of Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> and the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the first season of The Real World. Which was because uh, this is 1994, I right? Think. Um, I, I can't diss the real world. I mean, Eric Nees lives in Ocean uh, Township, not far from our studios yeah, 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 in yeah. Asbury a, Park. Yeah, so, for yeah. sure. Um, but one day, this movie Clerks comes in, and uh, I was supposed to check it into the system, then put it on the shelf so we could make money off of it. Okay. Uh, but I had heard this movie was funny, mm -hmm. and uh, since I was in a college town, it had actually come out at the local art house theater a couple months before. I remember seeing the ad in the paper. Um, for this movie, and I think someone even was like, "Man, that's a funny movie. We should go see it." And I found it was in black and white, so I was like, "I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to an art house theater." So you had I, a preconception in your head because it's black and white. Yes. It's in an art house theater. This I thought is, it was an art movie. Okay, I mean, it was at the art house theater. It's in black and white. Like, what more do you need? It was an indie movie, so it's obviously like some kind of French new wave <laughs> deal. It's called Clerks, so you know. And, Give on Smith. Yeah, and to be fair, 1994, you're talking Stargate was out at the same time. Uh, okay, you Pulp got a Fiction point. Pulp Fiction was 94, you, Shawshank right. Redemption, Forrest Gump. And uh, so I, I didn't see it in the theater, but once it came in on that tape, I'm like, you know what, I'm, I got nothing to do tonight. Instead of checking it into the system, I'm going to take it home and watch it, watch it. So I took it back. My brother was there. He had gotten off work, so we popped it in. 
and we laughed our asses off. And uh, I, yeah, I was like, what? Whoa, what the hell was that? That was awesome. Like, these guys talked, like, me and my friends talked. Mm -hmm. This guy threw in a whole, like, 10 minute conversation about changing toilets on the Death Star. <laughs> um, these two drug dealers outside of a convenience store. And then on top of that, I was like, this guy shot in New Jersey. Uh, my girlfriend at the time, uh, who I later married, was also from New Jersey. So, and it was in her hometown. Of Leonardo, her, okay. It was in her area. She grew up in Middletown. Oh, yeah, right next door, sure. Yeah, yeah. So um, I ended up showing her the movie. She was like, "That's I know that, that, ta that, I know that road. I, know, I, I think I know that, that wacky convenience store. And I was like, can we go one day? She was like, if you, you, like, if you want, yeah, I'll take you to the quick stop. <laughs> okay, so you um, experienced the quick stop. Yeah, but I really became obsessed with this movie to the point where I was trying to get all my friends to watch it. Because I, I, uh, I'm a pop culture comic book fan. Mm -hmm. And um, what, you know, uh, what, what us geeks do is when we find something we really love, we try to get everybody else to watch it. So Because sure. we want to talk about the finer points um, of, this is, this is all based on, like, comic book lore. Where if you see, you know, uh, you know, it's like, oh my God, Batman, uh, you know, that that battery right. he used on in issue two eighty two in panel five. Like, did you, did you notice it was made out of, you know, whatever? Like, my head the, just spun. <laughs> yeah, these are the, that. These wow. are dumb details that we want to argue about, and so. The, the, it was but the then, clerks became that focus for a while. Oh, it did, yeah, yeah. But no one would watch it because it was in black and white, and everyone thought it was an art movie, mm -hmm. and uh, and they would they went they wanted to see Stargate and Pulp Fiction instead, <laughs> um, so. Um, in order to channel that this weird fandom that I wanted to get out, uh, I was learning how to build websites okay. at the time. And this is 1995, 94, 95. So this is pre-Google, pre-Amazon, right. pre-Facebook, pre-Instagram. There's none of that out there. I think the only search engine out there was uh, Yahoo. They Yahoo. Were, so, yep. And I was learning how to build websites. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to build a fan website. Get it listed on Yahoo. Okay, so you're taking this upon yourself. Kevin Smith doesn't know about this at no, this point. No, not at all. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you take it to that step. You create it. Yeah. Kevin he, finds out about it, obviously. He did. Uh, so I put it up. Um, the it, it there and then there there are dudes from like Denver, Colorado, emailing me as I put my email address on the bottom, and right. they're like, "Hey, man, I love Clerks too. Like, oh yeah, what's your favorite scene? Like, I would get into like email." Uh, so that, with other that fans. whole conversation you talk about with the comic books is yeah. now gravitating into this. Yeah, yeah. same way, same out way. People yeah. around the world who'd seen Clerks, I was like, this is really cool. I'm finding my, you know, my 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 like my audience, my right. friends, um, other fans. And then yeah, one day the ultimate Clerks fan contacts me. Uh, Kevin had someone send me an email going, "Hey, Kevin Smith saw your site. He wants to talk to you. Call him tomorrow at this number." And I was like, "Whoa, this is weird. Is this a hoax?" Is yeah, you're thinking, yeah, this is, can't be what real. What does he want? No me, chance. What, what could he possibly want to talk to me about? Because uh, my first instinct was, all right, I took a bunch of images, uh, I made video clips, uh, you know, audio clips, uh, like all this stuff. I put it all up on my website because I wanted it to be really good. Mm -hmm. So my first thought was, all right, he, I violated a million copyright laws. Um, I'm Asian, which is what we do. Like <laughs> he's gonna tell me to take all this down. Maybe he wants to sue me. I don't know, but then uh, I thought I, I, I can see where the chain of thought could come into play a little. But bit. But I've read so I've done my homework on Kevin. Uh, you know, went to Vancouver Film School, dropped out, made took ten credit cards. I'm like, this doesn't really seem like something he would do. So you're hoping that your Uber fandom at this point is gonna your spider senses, so to speak, are right on point. As I thought more about it, I was like, okay, if he wanted me to take all this down, he probably would have called the lawyer, had a lawyer mm, contact yeah, me or, or send a right. letter or something. It's like, well, let's see what he wants. So I call the next day. Uh, the phone picks up. And I hear this voice like, hello. <laughs> I'm like, hey, is Kevin Smith there? He's not here right now. I'm like, all right, well, my, my name is Ming. He asked me to call him at this number. Like, can you have him call me back? And he's like, all right, give me your number. Gave him the number, hung up. And I was like, wow, that really sounded like Jay from the Clerks movie. <laughs> and it was Jay, Jay from the Clerks <laughs> movie. I don't Jay know Mews. why he was working the reception <laughs> desk that day. But he was, and then eventually Kevin did call me back. He's like, "Hey, I saw your site. Love what you did. Um, can you do more of it?" I'm like, what, what, "What do you like? What do you mean?" He's like, "I want to build. I mean, making more movies. I have a production company. I have all. Uh, I have these um, stills from the set of Clerks that uh, I can give you that you don't have on your site. I want to expand what you did." And I'm like, what? "He's like, can you help me out?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm of sure. course." Absolutely. He's like, all right. And the next day, I get a FedEx box. It's got all this, you know, it literally, they're, this is kind of pre iPhone and sort of pre digital camera. So they're a little three by five black and white 
stills from clerks of him like sleeping on the floor, <laughs> um, of uh, you know him behind the camera. For, right. It was like holy shit, this is awesome. This is like Spielberg sending you stills from Jaws that no one's ever seen, or Close Encounters or whatever, or George Lucas <laughs> sending you stuff from Star Wars that right. no one ever seen. Um, so yeah, I eventually built uh, a website for his production company, which encompassed uh, you know past fi- films, uh, uh, teasing future films, mm-hmm. uh, just all this stuff that he had in the office that uh, I was able to put up for him. And uh, that that I was 1996, so I've been working with him ever since. And but how did Comic Book Man come <laughs> out of all this? I so, know your I know your passion of yeah, it, but yeah, I mean, yeah. and I and I, when I look back on all this, I am convinced Kevin Smith is probably the only person who could have. Taking this idea, make it work, and make it last seven years. Oh, yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah. So, I mean, real quick, uh, eventually he hired me full-time about four years after uh, we ended up meeting. Uh, um, he he was like, hey, you want to work full-time? I'm like, yeah, that would be fun. Of course, yeah. It's like, all right, you got to move to Jersey, though. I'm like, oh, man. Now, where so, are you living at this point? I was in L.A. at this point. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I was kind of between jobs, so I was I was like, I, I want to take this job at Jersey, man. I don't know about this. <laughs> I visited. It seemed like fun. But it's but, a it's a different culture shock. I mean, if you're living in LA, sure. and if I've done my homework correctly, you've lived in Michigan. I did. I you grew up lived there. a little bit in Indiana. You I've were been born in Ohio. Over. Yeah. So you look at it. Okay, uh, Midwest, Cali, now Jersey. Yeah. There's nothing that prepares you for New Jersey. No, but I think it was love at first bite of pizza. I was like, okay, I'm there. This, you I'm go. Good. All right, I'm good. Well said. I'm good. So that was uh, I moved here in 2002. I've been here ever since, and I, I love it here. Mm-hmm. We, we were living in a good area, but uh, ended up working full time. Um, I guess uh, so. I I, uh, you know, I expanded on the website empire. I built uh, the first online store, the Jan Samba mm-hmm. Secret Stash online. Right. Um, built that, and then a couple years later, Kevin got into podcasting. Um, which, uh, if you know Kevin, uh, you know likes to curse. He hates rules. It's a perfect format. Oh, for him. absolutely. Yeah, it's perfect because uh, he had, he had tried to stint at radio when after because he had eventually moved out to L.A. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the stations gave him a two-hour slot on a Saturday randomly, and he, he, he took a stab at that, decided he didn't really love it because it was too restrictive. He had to read ads. He had to break every 15 minutes, couldn't say what he wanted to say. Hey, that's my world. Yeah. I know it. I understand yeah. it. Yeah, so it, it, when... It, yeah, and if you're not used to the formatics. Yeah. And obviously, Kevin being a guy who's so used to being in charge, you know, he, he writes, he directs, he yes. produces, to suddenly to kind of go from being the guy in charge to suddenly being like, Oh wait a minute! You're dictating to me what I have to do. That's got to be no. a shock to us, and it's not comfortable for yeah, him. Obviously, you, I mean, yeah, that's that's you know all about that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, podcasting where it's a format where there are no rules. You don't have to break for an ad. You produce your own show. Mm-hmm. You go as short as you want. You go as long as you want. Mm-hmm. You can you know you can curse as much as you want. Uh, it was perfect for him. So yeah. he started real early, uh, 2007. I was about to say, he was really ahead of this boom that we're seeing, and yeah. I think the boom in podcasting has been what would you say the last three years? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah with uh, I think uh, that um, docu like true crime uh, series serial. Yes, kind of put it in the limelight. Um, you know, before that, uh, there was like Ricky Gervais was mm-hmm. very popular. Then you know you got the Rogans and the Adam Carollas mm-hmm. of the world and Mark Marins. But I right. think um, I think like something like serial really got into like all the house the right. housewives and uh, you mm-hmm. know normal middle America mm-hmm. really got into the mainstream and. Um, but uh, yeah, he started way earlier right. than all that, and uh, it was—I it, mean, for him, it was immediately successful. One, because he's a great storyteller, True. so he's perfect for the podcast medium. Yeah. Two, he had a—he had an audience already who were, who was like, "Whoa, Kevin Smith's doing a podcast," or and as I'm some, learning, that's one of the key things. You really do have to have a really good base following, and Kevin has a very good base. following. Oh yeah, following. for sure. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah, if you if you can't spend uh, three years to build that base following, <laughs> and you already have it, you're already one. Hey, up on three years. Here. Welcome to my world. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> and um, yeah, so uh, the the podcast thing really, I think, changed everything here. You're like, mm-hmm. well, I Really, I love this. Uh, figured out a way to make money doing it, which uh, he's one of the few out there. Which because uh, that's a question we get here all the time. It's like, mm-hmm. all right, I've started my podcast. I record weekly. How do I make money? I'm like, well, be you can be famous, like <laughs> jump into it being famous, or just keep grinding at it because it's not easy. No, it definitely isn't. I know from the radio end, it's a grind. Yeah. You know, you're you're still representing a station, but you're also trying to perfect your craft to right. try to get to a level where it's like. Hey, you know what? Now suddenly you're a name, and that name can make you more money just outside of your own salary. Yeah, for sure. So it's sort of the same mentality going on there. Yeah, but eventually uh, he got us all all of us into podcasting, right? Because um, he was starting a, a, a network. Um, his podcast is called Smodcast. Mm-hmm. Very and familiar. He's smart. He started the Smodcast Podcast Network. 
Uh, he's like, I need other shows. I need other voices that aren't just me. So he got me and Mike Zapsick. Uh, again, the co-star and right. comic book man, co-owner of Shared Universe. Inverse. Got us to start a pop culture podcast called I Sell Comics. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, later on, uh, so uh, that led to Comic Book Man, the TV show. Yeah, that's when. In yeah. 2010, 2011, with the success of the Walking Dead TV show. Yeah, I mean, what kind of response when you're sitting there just finding out we're going on after The Walking Dead. Yeah. We're going on after a audience that's still there. It was, yeah, it was yeah, at the time the biggest TV show on the planet. Yeah. By, by, uh, yeah, by far. I mean, there were episodes that were like 10, 12 million viewers. Yeah. I mean, but we, uh, we had the advantage where Walking Dead was based on a comic book. Right. So AMC wanted to keep that audience going, the comic book, uh, like geek audience going. And they're like, well, what else can we do in the comic book world? And here it comes. Yeah, and they didn't really know. They just knew they wanted something in the comic book world. They're like, well, why don't we contact the King Geek himself, Kevin Smith? Mm-hmm. He'll have an idea. So I believe the story went, he, they called him like, hey, we, we want to do this comic book-based TV show. Would you, would you like to be involved? Would you like to create it? He's like, no, nah, not really. And they're like, all right, well, if you were to create it, what would you do? Mm-hmm. And he was like, hey, man, you know that show Pawn Stars where, you know, they build, bring a bunch of knickknacks and those old guys in Vegas uh, argue about whether they want to buy or sell it or not. And they're, they're and that found they're, a cold following. Absolutely. Pawn shop. I would take that but put it in a comic book shop and have a bunch of nerds argue over, you know, the first appearance of Wolverine and, you know, G.I. Joe figures and Migos. And it's funny. That circles back to what you were talking about before, what you were doing just with your friends many, yeah. many years before. At the comic book shop yeah. or beyond. And they're like, that's a great idea. All right, congratulations. You just created a TV show. Wow. Uh, and that kind of, uh, yeah, so they're like, we, we want to do this. This is a great idea. Um, that eventually went, uh, they got some money, and they're like, all right, we want to shoot a pilot. We got to see if this concept will actually work on screen. It looks good on paper. Right. Will it work once we roll cameras? And, um, and um Kevin was like, all right, this sounds like fun. What's the budget? And I think it was like 10 grand or something, not much at all. Right. And uh, he was like, 10 grand, is that even going to get us any, like, how much can we, what, what can we shoot for 10 grand? They're like, well, you know, I, we know that's not a lot. And whatever comic book shop that we find to shoot the pilot in, they're going to take a chunk of it, most of it. And he was like, well, I have a shop. I won't charge you anything. There you go. And they were kind of like, idiot, why didn't you tell us this? <laughs> like, when we started this, <laughs> we would have been, you know, sweating less. So, and he was like, all right, I'll do one better. Uh, you know, instead of, you know, paying actors or whatever, just for the pilot purposes, just use the guys I have working in there. Uh, I, I have a bunch of guys that work for me in there. Just throw them in there. Right. If you have to tell them what to say just for the purposes of the pilot, Go for it, but they're pretty funny. Uh, yeah. You know, they might even you know they should be able to hold their own in front of a camera. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, one day, um, one day, a bunch of this crew came down. I mean, Kevin had kind of given us a heads up. He's like, "Hey, we're gonna shoot this pilot for this TV show," and I'm I'm very enthusiastic about stuff like this. Like, well, this could be fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, Walt Flanagan, who managed the store, he he was very apprehensive. Didn't really want to do it, but whatever Kevin says goes. So um, they came down. They shot it. Uh, it was very, you know, it was a very loose idea, but um, you know, cut together. The network saw it and they're like, "Wow, this is, this is re- not only is this really good, but who are these four guys that you put in there? They're really, they're great." And Kevin was like, "No, no, you don't want them. They just work there." Like, no, 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 these guys, idiot. <laughs> these are the guys. <laughs> like, how could you not see this beforehand? Right. He didn't. You know, he just saw us as. You know, Brian, well, you know, the yeah, it's just the guys in the years. store. That's it. He didn't really see us as like you know, pre- you know, necessarily the guys who would be on the uh, on a TV show. So, and then your life changes from there. Yeah, but podcasting actually bolstered the idea that the show would work. They actually went and they listened to some of our podcast episodes, and they went back to Kevin. And they're like, "Hey, if these guys can talk on the TV show like they do on the podcast, where they're going back and forth with each other, mm-hmm. where they're not talking over each other, where they're making fun of the little Asian guy." This this show might work. We might get like three or four seasons out of this. Yeah, the last thing you're expecting is 96 episodes yeah, exactly. over seven years. Yeah, so it worked out. It was pretty. It was pretty very unexpected. Though. Yeah. Like I have no, I know aspirations of being on TV. Yeah, I mean that raises an interesting question. It changes your life and it changes your focus a little bit. And now suddenly here's a shared universe, which is now yeah. celebrating its second anniversary. Yeah. And you're now really deep into the podcast world, oh, probably yeah. more than you ever thought you were going to be. Oh, yeah, for sure. 
And you've, you know, how many podcasts are on the uh, Shared Universe roster these days? Uh, I think we're at, we're almost close to 30 right now. And we've wow. launched like 30 shows in the last two years. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yes, um, I, I, it's cool though. We've gotten to the point where there were people rolling through them. Right. And they hadn't recorded an episode yet. They're on vacation mm -hmm. or they're driving through and they Google Podcast Studio in New Jersey and we come up. And they'll come in and record an episode here. That's great. Uh, on their way to their vacation yeah. or on their way back. And I, that, that's like, that's at the heart of it. That's what we're here for. Right. Like, you know, we have a we have a podcast studio here. Come record. Mm -hmm. um, come check it out for sure. As, as well as launching new shows. That's what I really love doing. Yeah, well. And what you're doing tonight. So thank you very much yeah, for that. Of course. I appreciate Absolutely. that. Um, for anybody who wants to know the website for a shared universe, please. It is a shared universe dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two locations now, one in Eatontown, New Jersey. Uh Steps from Jane and Bob Secret Stash. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a new location on the Asbury Park Boardwalk, which is where we right. are right now. And if I've been reading correctly, who's the baseball player you're connected with that may give you another location? Oh, that was uh, Hunter Pence. Yes, was, who uh, just signed with the Giants, by the way, a couple yeah. days ago. Very congratulations to him. He was coming off a great year last year until he got hurt. Yeah, and uh, um, from what I read, uh, you know, he was looking for he, – he's still looking to play, and uh, – the two two teams that offered him deals were the San Francisco Giants, uh, who we rung won uh, two rings with. Right, he had a great run with the team. Or the Houston Astros. Well, I think he made the right decision. Call it a hunch. Yeah. yeah, and it worked out for him. He owns a home in Houston. Okay. And he also has an apartment in San Francisco that he never got rid of. So okay. it, it yeah, it, it all worked out for him as it always does. Right, like, he's one of the coolest guys I know. If you do become partners with him, where would you base this location? Oh, San Francisco Houston. or Houston? Houston? Okay. I love San Francisco, but man, I always joke. I was like, San Francisco, like you're the only guy I know who can even, even like scrape by in San Francisco, and you know you're in a baseball major league baseball player's salary, right? Because that. That, uh, yeah, that town is expensive. Oh, yeah, he's got nothing to worry about. You realize at his peak at one point he was making $19 million a I, year. Yes, I'm yeah. well aware of his contract <laughs> terms. Just, uh, you know, not you know not every day somebody you know makes that much Yeah, money, exactly, so. that obscene and, amount of money. And not only that, but it's public. Yeah. Like how much he's making. So. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. This is Ming Chen. I'm Rob Akampora. This is the A-Game with Rob Akampora. We're going to talk about um, the con circuit. But to do that... Uh, I we got a special guest here. I'd like to... Ron, you want to oh, come yeah? on? I figure, Whoa. Yeah, I, I think if we're going to talk about cons, I want, to, I want a guy who, who has goes been to doing cons? it for so Holy crap. Long. Wow. Brian O'Halloran, everybody. Brian O'Halloran, clerks, right. mall rats, chasing clerks Amy. He, uh, Brian needs a beer. He yeah. needs an Asbury Park Sea Dragon, yes. everybody. I'll crack one open yes. with him on this one. Yeah, we're... Uh, but, um, <laughs> okay, so... Um, Brian O'Halloran is in the house, man. What's up, everybody? Yes. Hello there, sir. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you never just know. So you know, uh, long-time listener, big-time fan. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. I've, uh, I've been listening since the very beginning. <laughs> I appreciate that. We're How I'm many good. minutes in? We are now 27 minutes into this whole thing. What? I thought you were on year 12. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> no, you know what it is? It's, uh, it's good to be here. Uh, I'm really technically, and no joke, I'm not doing this for the cameras, I'm really not even supposed to be here tonight. <laughs> oh, that's true, oh, though. True. Zing. Notice I didn't say it. Thank uh, God. As uh, Scott Schiaffo would be saying right now, zing. Zing. Um, but it's uh, it's good to be here at the uh, shared universe here, right on the Asbury boardwalk. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, Mr. Love Daddy himself from uh, Do the Right Thing, where his K-Love station was right on the street right. there in bed -Stuy. Um, but it's really good to see that uh, the second location is up and running here. Yeah, it's really cool. And uh, I just want to go back to earlier in the episode. Uh, yes. that um, he was mentioning Clerks. So he was mentioning should... Clerks, yes. and, and uh, Ming has done a lot for the Viewers Universe. He was uh, one of the masterminds of the bulletin boards for the fans who were the, the bulletin board uh, denizens back in the day. Uh, I remember those days well. But also, uh, Ming, how did you not hook up a brother when he was looking for his Szechuan sauce to just make it? Like, oh yeah, dude, you're, you're right. Chinese, bro. I, just I, make I, the Szechuan on. sauce. Come, come on, on. I, I'm not going through that extra effort for. And it <sighs> wasn't. He would have wanted the official Szechuan sauce with the packaging and everything. That's Americanized. You would have given him the authentic Szechuan sauce. I know. Sauce. I, you know, I just wanted. To or is that only sexy time with your wife? It is. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's the that's uh, right the, the Ming Chen ancient. I'm Chinese. sorry, I took it dark. <laughs> I'm ancient Chinese, Chinese secret. secret. Yes. I didn't know you were going to say that. Yeah. I know. I, anytime Mike flips out, I just right. stand back. And why I, do I suddenly <laughs> want to go to the laundromat and wash in Calgon? I don't know why. Yeah. But full disclosure, I've known Rob Akinpour since the very beginning, since '94, when we were 
doing publicity for the original Clarks. Yeah. Uh, you were one of the DJs at uh, 106.3 WHTG, the alternative uh, radio station here down the shore. Yes. Uh, which for many, many years was amazing. Uh, it was. And I great miss, great I missed, time of my life. I miss those days. Great concerts, great yeah. guests, great everything. So Absolutely. that little shack on the little hill of a farm we in broadcast, the middle of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. A little place in Eatontown, New Jersey out of a house. Yeah, God I, bless I, Faye Gage. I literally think place. it's an outhouse for UPS right now because it's, <laughs> it's right behind the big UPS building there in town. And so what's great about this is that uh, it's great to see you finally getting into the podcasting yeah. game because to be honest with you, you as an interviewer in general have always been awesome Thank when you. I hear you on the air from wherever you were, from when you were out in the days in the Lehigh Valley, yeah. down doing country music for God's sakes, which man, I'm sure you had to just be like, all right, I'm going to have to hey, learn let country. Let me tell you something. Some of it is good. I, get, I got into some No, no, of it. I'm yeah. not slamming country. Don't, yeah. don't be writing him saying country music's yeah. awesome. Look, I'm Irish. We we invented country music, okay. So yeah, so but I mean, you you went through the years of being on a country music station, yeah. and now here you are doing your podcast, man. It's about time. I yeah. mean, uh, you've always been a lot of fun to talk with in general and thank to hang you. out with, and thank so you, thank uh, you. I wish you uh, many many years of this podcast. It, it's through. an interesting new world. I'm still really learning a lot about it. I mean, I think Ming said it best before. If you have this aspiration, you're going to become a millionaire doing this. You got the wrong aspiration. Oh, dude, no, yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, acting, anything in the entertainment business, people, no. you're not going to make a ton of money. There's Trust rare, me. rarely right. do you make money in when it comes to entertainment. Twenty five plus years of radio, yeah, I but, know broke. But, I understand broke. But if you do something that you love, as yes. they say, you'll never work a day in your life. I and think that's very if you're true. enjoying yourself doing what you're doing, which you are, yes. and I can hear it, I can hear it in the interviews and and stuff like that. I mean, just interviewing Ming alone. I mean, that's great. I mean, it's. It's a great, it's a it's a good marketing plan on your end to make sure that the owner of the place you're using to podcast right. to be the first guest. So yeah, I think you so can too, get that yes. Ming discount for your mm-hmm. hourly rate of how to record. Here. Exactly. So I get it, dude. I'm on I'm on your side on that. I appreciate that. But uh, you know what else is great is that um, this is such a great location to podcast from. A, you literally walked here to the studio from where you live here Pretty in much, Jersey. Yeah. But also. <laughs> God, look at the the view of the ocean. It's just it's just awesome. It I is. Know. I mean, we are recording at night, so we don't really see the ocean. But during mm-hmm. the day, trust me, people, it's gorgeous here. So you're going to want to get thing. here until the hot summer days come, and then someone here wants to come in and take this space over for I don't know something like homemade jewelry or something. And these guys are out on their ass. No. But otherwise, don't I let think, that happen to us. No, please. no, no, come, no. come. We like being here. Yes. Yeah, so what you want to do is you want to come. You want to record, and when you want to record at the uh, shared universe, say you request the. The, uh, the Asbury Park location. Yeah. Make this place get super busy. Exactly. And then you can bring friends who could just sit outside on their beach chairs and watch while you guys record. It's awesome. What I was about to talk about with the... Um... Yes, now do your interview. No, thank you very much. <laughs> now that now my rant is over. <laughs> and I know people are like, how about your podcast, Brian, the Ohala Rant? As there's a, matter, as there's a, a sample fact, of it right there. Yeah, that's what you would get on the Ohala Rant, which is coming soon, by the way. So I'm very happy for you on that. Mm. Cheers. In the Comic Con universe, you both have become, I think, really mainstays in a sense. Brian, you do what about two a month, roughly? About, yeah, it, give or take, right? And Ming, you're kind of on that same page, yeah, right? pretty much, yeah, yeah. I, unexpectedly, but yes, yeah he, yeah, he literally is like on the hotline of phone calls, like, "Hey, Ming, we have an open space. Come on down. I'll bring you to this hot yoga place, this coffee shop, mm-hmm. and this secret, secret, <laughs> super secret bar. Are you in?" He's like, "You had me at hot yoga, yoga. Yeah. hot yoga. Yeah, the other stuff is just a bonus, but yeah, I love adventure. I love going to new cities. Right. I love going to cities I've been to before and going back to the places I found last time. And uh, if I have friends there as well, like Brian, yeah." That makes it even better. I think it's genetic. I has. I think he has a bit of Genghis Khan in him. He I, loved adventure. Maybe, yeah. Yes, I think so. Like I, I, his eyes go really wide when he sees elephants. Right. Really now. <laughs> yeah. So what? <laughs> no, but seriously, like he. Whenever I fo- if you follow Ming on his Instagram, especially, and you see the the multitude of fo- photos of oh, yeah. where he's at, it's always one of those five choices I was rattling off. But also, he. I told him I was like, dude, you got to do a travel blog. Like, you really could do like the places you've that's, been. That's kind a of really thing. good idea. Because he does. For some reason, everybody comes to him with the secret tip of like, no, where you need to go is if you go down to the third door on the left, mm-hmm. knock on the door twice, go downstairs where that plumbing room is mm-hmm. go through that other door go through the sewers and then come up the other end it's this amazing speakeasy it's great yeah. and you know what the best thing to have there a manhattan yes wow yeah, and he does it and he does it and he's <laughs> taking these photos look at me i went through a- <laughs> and ming uh, ming shen went through a mile of shit to get his manhattan you know what i mean it's like uh, andy dufresne like- that's right so give me a great example of a city that you've been to that most people would sit there and just go why would i ever 
go there. Uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay, now give me a reason why I should go to Albuquerque, uh, New Mexico. There are hidden bars there. There are hidden pool halls there. There's The food is amazing, uh, especially if you like southwestern food. Oh, yeah, like green absolutely. Chilies. And, and uh, yeah, I... I um, you have to dig, you know, on the outside. It looks like Breaking Bad. With plus, the, plus, you get to make that Bugs Bunny joke. You can't, yeah, oh, that's you right. I knew it should have taken a left turn at Albuquerque. Exactly. <laughs> you do. But, yeah, one year I, I wandered into a private club there that I had no business being at. Um, end up, end up, Ooh, like Eyes Wide Shut private club? No, well, yeah, I'm, I, yeah I, I, I didn't pull a Harvey Keitel and a Nicole Kidman there. I thought I was getting an exclusive <laughs> here. We could have had video. I'm telling you. Um, but yeah, I wasn't supposed to be there. End up becoming a member of this hey, private that's my club, <laughs> and then uh, the surly bartender who questioned my my membership or my reason of being there. We don't allow Asians in here. Oh, I think that's what she was implying. But yeah, we, oh, pretty no. much. We uh, we we end up becoming best friends. She's a she's a very talented podcaster now. In, oh wow, in Albuquerque. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we ended up drinking together last her, time. I went her out podcast there. is the people I don't let into the club. <laughs> <laughs> you are shoot, man. We gotta get you on that podcast. We gotta get you on Albuquerque. This kind is fun. That you would love the city. Podcast is called Ten Drink Minimum. Oh um, wow! Which, wait a minute, Ten Drink. I'm, I'm signing up for this one. Wait yeah, a minute. I may, I may not last, but I'll I'll go for See, it. See if that was my podcast, it would be called Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and, and there literally is a liquor store. You go through the cooler. And there's a secret right. set of See what I mean? down there. That's what I'm talking about. And there's a secret bar down there called <laughs> I Swear Founders. to God. It's an like, amazing he's like, place. He's like fucking Loha. Uh, what's his name? The, the kid from uh, Indiana Jones. Oh, Short Round. And you're like, you know, yeah, he's like Short Round, yeah. finding the secret thing. Come with me, Dr. Jones. I'll show you where to get yeah. the 10 drink minimum. Yeah, Speaking no. of discoveries, <laughs> this, is, this is a good segue in my book. Because, I mean, the one photo he pops up a lot on, and Ming, you have posted this a few times. Sure. I've got to ask. Okay. What the hell is Fago Sola? Explain Fago. Oh, okay. Explain this. Such a new Fago soda is a very popular soda brand in the Midwest, mainly in Michigan. Right. And I grew up drinking it. Um, they have many flavors, but a lot of them are kind of knockoffs of po- more popular sodas. So instead of Dr. Pa- or Mountain Dew, they have Moon Mist. Same okay. color green. Instead of like Dr. Pepper, there's Rock and Rye, or they they have their own. I, I see you of, like the Rock and Rye a lot. Yeah, I've noticed they, that. Uh, but they have their own flavors as well. They have one, a cotton candy flavor that will make your teeth fall out. It's great. lovely. So uh, growing up, I, this is just what I drank. It was cheaper than the regular soda right. in the convenience store. This is what I drank. Then years later, uh, the Insane Clown Posse really blew this blew this brand up because um, that's all they drink. They would spray it on people at their concerts, oh, and all the juggalos got really into like Fago. So Fago blew up after the Insane of Clown all Posse. bands, Insane Clown Posse. I yeah, wouldn't yeah. have thought that. Wow. But to me, like if you know, if you see Fago, like that's Michigan to me. That's what I grew okay, up with. Okay, gotcha. And that's why I love it so much. But you can't get it here in Jersey. No, you can't get it in L.A. You can only kind of get it in the in the Midwest. And weird spots in Pennsylvania. Right, yeah, like the, in the, the Rust Belt. Right. Yeah. But I've noticed he's not brought any back. I'm sitting here kind of going, what, is it illegal to bring Fago to New Jersey? Dude, or he, what? dude he leaves it all at his family's house because he has family in Ann yeah, Arbor. Right, yeah. exactly. So literally yeah. whenever you, especially any show that's in that kind of area, he literally on his table has like a mountain of Fago soda from all fans just bringing him yeah. six packs. You know, like So they know. Here. They absolutely right. know now. I, I mean, I may beg for it on, online, but that's, <laughs> I'm not I'm not above that. It's like, hey, if, you, if you're going by the gas station bring me a, bring me a case man right but i i remember i took it i took it all home piled it on the counter and uh, my mom gets home and she she was like are you okay like she thought i had a problem she thought like she thought i, I was uh, yeah she really she do started, you have a burning ulcer for drinking yeah, all that soda she started all yelling at me she's like what the yeah. hell dude i'm like she thought i bought it all oh jeez. and to convince her because she, the, Cliff, the whole, Cliff, tell me something. Are you diabetic? Yes. Are you? Yeah. Because you will be if you drink this entire stash. <laughs> it's like, wait, tell me, who'd you learn this from? Tell me. You. I learned it by watching you. You have just proven that every mother is the same. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah, but don't tell me you put that on a plane. No, I didn't. It's, it's exactly. The, yeah. I grabbed, I flew back with whatever I could a six put pack. in my check in right. luggage, and the rest is cooling, chilling nicely in the garage right now. All right. There you house. go. There so you I have go. a supply when I go home. <laughs> Brian, same question. What city kind of surprised you a little bit that you kind of went to and you went, oh, wow, this is a lot, you know? Um, I, I don't say like, oh, wow, this is kind of like crazy. I mean, there there are favorite cities of mine. Chicago is a favorite city of oh, mine. Yeah. But, I mean, that's a major metropolitan city. Um, 
Raleigh is really a great city. I've to, heard great things about that, Raleigh. You know, yeah. it, but it's also it's a lot of transplants from the Northeast. That, more that so moved now than to, ever. Yeah, yeah, more so now than ever. And now there's actually people transplanting from Florida up to the Raleigh area. That's like they interesting. want to get into that happy medium of a weather mm -hmm. and be just cost of living because right. the cost of living even in Florida isn't what it used to be. No. You know, when people are like I'm going down to retire in Florida. Well, now Florida is getting like mm -hmm. kind of weird, and then in the sense of like cost of living, but also. Not every place you can build in Florida. The, the, right. You know, you got the sinkholes that are eating like half of the state, and then the other half is Everglades. Right. And so uh, the Carolinas have become this sweet spot to live in in the, in the East Coast area anyway. I think the show that's kind of really put a focus on that has been the last couple seasons of Love It or Listen on HGTV, where they've been doing it in Raleigh, Durham, and suddenly you're seeing what you can get for your money. Yeah. I and mean, it really just goes, whoa. Okay. Right. I mean, and then and, and it's people who don't want to have to deal with snow, although this past weekend we had snow down yeah. in, in Raleigh and uh, in the Carolinas in general. So for that to uh, happen, that's a great city. Um, I've always enjoyed myself in Colorado Springs. Is a great city. Air Force Academy. Air there, Force yeah. Academy is there. So it, a lot of service members come to the uh, Colorado Springs Comic Con that I'm uh, that I've done a few years of. Mm -hmm. um, God, other cities. Um, I've done uh, Rhode Island, Providence, Rhode Island is yeah. another great city to to go and hang out. That's another great comic. I've actually really heard they got some great Italian restaurants in that area. Yeah, and usually it's really funny because that's one of the things when I travel to a new city and who's ever picking me up from the airport as we're making our way to the airport uh, to the hotel of the city that I'm doing the convention in. I'll ask, so where am I going to eat? Sure, what's, sure. what's the shit in this town when yeah. it comes to food? And as soon as someone says, "Well, there's this great Italian," I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, hold it, stop, hold the train." Mm -hmm. All right, you're talking about a, a New Yorker, New. Jerseyite, who uh, you say Italian? No, it's not. We've I'm, been spoiled. I'm, unless Absolutely. we're going on a plane and going to Tuscany or going to you know going to Sicily, right. we're not going to find great Italian in Indianapolis. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I usually move on from there because I'm like you know in New York it's great. Like the meatballs in restaurants in the New York metropolitan area, you literally have actual mobster in the meatballs. Yeah. It's, there's no different taste than actual mobster in the meatball. Mm -hmm. You can you can taste Vinny in it. You know, <laughs> um, you know like when they say we got some great pizza there's this place pizza hut i'm like shut the hell up there's no pizza hut pizza that's really good uh not that, like if they want to sponsor the show i'm not trying to insult uh, the, I, the yeah future please sponsor. bring your money bring your pizza yeah, I, I he no loves shame. it and they also he loves chicken wings too i know you guys I, do yes, chicken I do. wings or I, wing I, stop I, like or whatever said, it is. no shame pizza so, uh, it's, pizza yeah. it's not calling shared humorous don't worry about yeah it. i'd yeah. start you can that's a shit i'm looking for sponsorship i'm looking for sponsors he's a new kid in the game he's trying to get sponsors hello we've mentioned fedex three times today yeah so yeah he's lucky about the time. <laughs> they get their shit done, and they fold your flag for you. Yeah, absolutely. You know Bravo. Um, but, uh, yeah, I usually like to find whatever the shit is for that town. Right. Like where, just like Ming does. Like, where mm -hmm. am I going to go to get a neat, you know, martini or whatever? Right. Um, that kind of thing. So, uh, and he'll tell you, too. It's That that makes it for us. We're big fans. Like, we're, we're fortunate enough that people want to meet us for the work that we've done. Right, exactly. But but we're also fortunate enough to be able to go to these cons to meet other people, mm -hmm. other celebs as well, and to hang out and have drinks and mm -hmm. go to dinner and, and whatnot. And so, uh, but the other thing too, it, to entertain us is we love to go to great bars and mm -hmm. restaurants and stuff like that. Louisville, another great, Louisville, Kentucky, yeah, another great town to have a lot of food. Louisville, Nashville, yeah. Nashville is a nonstop, oh, yeah. which I'm, I've convinced myself that Nashville is the bachelorette like capital of the United States, it, it's like, official now, dude. Really? It's official, yeah. All really? those, all those ten-person pedal bike rolling bars, right? They have. It's a big thing down in Nashville. If you've been down to Nashville, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't been down to Nashville, ladies, I this, think this, this podcast is where you is going to Susan, Nashville, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Who's ever who? Any of the ladies want to take their girls out for a, you know a, a ladies' night? Nashville, like every one of them was all these women, and they're all pedaling like crazy while drinking shots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I was overwhelmed at how. Crazy it was. Uh, mm -hmm. Austin, another great town. Ooh, ooh. South you know, by Southwest it, Festival is still one of the completely. And it is the only blue spot of the entire state of Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, so great restaurants there, great barbecue, uh, fantastic places to hear music. Obviously, for yes, the, absolutely. Uh, not only just the film festival, mm -hmm. but even when the film festival is not around and the music fest not going on, um, that's another city I really enjoyed. And then internationally, I loved Australia and New Zealand. Auckland was just to die for, and uh, that was just a great surprise when you get involved in this, you know, Comic Con universe and suddenly you're going to the land down under. Yeah, uh, which is just so sexy and dirty to say already. But um, but at the same time, <laughs> the, the fans really enjoyed the, the Kevin Smith films. Right. The, the, you know, Europe enjoys us, especially the UK, are huge fan base to Kevin's films. Uh, the only ones that, that I don't see them pick up is Asia. Asia at all. Like, wow. you're into Japan, mm -hmm. China, India. 
I guess because I, to Indians especially, it's just like that's just a documentary to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's the video. Clerks is just an HR video of what not to do in a in a convenience store. <laughs> so. <laughs> I know you're going to send him emails. Don't right. send me emails. <laughs> They're going to me. A game. Hello, with Rob how are you? Thank you very much. Brian's going to be in Richmond next weekend, and if they want to Galaxy follow Galaxy Con, Galaxy yeah. Con, if they want to follow where you're going, because I mean you've got you know many coming up. Uh, where can they find all that information? Uh, well, the new thing now is uh, Jeff Anderson. Uh, this is his first year ever. Yeah, th- joining. I'm the, glad the you bring Comic-Con. that up because this is sort of a, a continuation of the 25th cel- anniversary celebration of Clerks. Right. And now that Jeff's on board, it just makes it even sweeter. Yeah. This past October uh, 19th was the 25th anniversary of the release of Clerks yeah. in theaters, uh, and uh, for a year and a half, uh, Maggie Blaine. Who's our sub rep uh, from uh, ZSC Entertainment, mm-hmm. uh, ZSCEntertainment.com, for booking a lot of the VSQ uh, people like myself, Jay Muse, mm-hmm. uh, now Jeff Anderson, Marilyn Gigliotti, Scott Schiaffo, mm-hmm. Ernie O'Donnell, all the guys from Comic Ma- Book Men. Man. You got Mike Ming, yep. uh, Walt, We're on there. Brian uh, on yeah. occasion. Yeah, exactly. Right. Brian when he feels like it. Um, <laughs> Johnson, by the way. Uh, so uh, they're all under the ZSC umbrella. But Maggie Blaine worked a year and a half to get Jeff to, to come on board. Wow. So uh, our first one was just two weeks ago mm-hmm. uh, out in uh, Sterling Heights, Michigan, which is just north of Detroit, mm-hmm. uh, at Astronomicon 3. Huge reception. Both me and Ming were also there as well. Yeah. Uh, now, Ming, Ming, did Ming can you testify act, to I was this. about to say, did you host a panel with uh, Brian and Jeff? They for? did. I did, yeah. yeah. They were like, well, uh, would you like to moderate the clerks panel? I'm like, man, if you didn't ask me, I would have been very offended. Thank you, yeah. Exactly. I would have been very offended. So it was cool. I, I got to introduce them. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I got to stand up there as I answered questions. And, uh, you know, if you would have asked me back in 95 when I saw the movie... Popping in a yeah, you then know, you'd be a, in this point here know, in 2020, right, going what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so that's, that's pretty crazy. That 25 years later, yeah. I'd be up on a stage. With, but also uh, at the same time, uh, it, it was such a great panel. I was like, we should have him as our moderator. Just travel with us as our moderator. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean uh, it's not a it's not a hard it's not a hard job. But, well, no, uh, but you know the history of it too. I do. Yeah. So yeah, trust yeah, me, sure. we've been to a lot of cons where they bring a moderator in and they're asking incredibly basic, like literally basic questions. Yeah, yeah. and it's just like oh, no, we're gonna keep wait. it fun. Uh, we only have forty five minutes to do this. Do we really want to waste it on basic questions? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Note to any moderators out there. Um, that would be me. I'm but one. the other thing, too, is... Uh, so, yeah. So, this coming weekend uh, in uh, Richmond, Virginia, is GalaxyCon. So, GalaxyCon.com right. uh, slash Richmond. Um, we got myself. We have uh, Jay Muse. We have, uh, obviously, Jeff Anderson. But we also have Elizabeth, uh, Sh- uh, Shannon Elizabeth, and also Michael Rooker. Oh, on wow. The, when it comes to the View Askew circle. Right. That's yeah. Mole Right. That's, yeah, Mole Rats. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, we'll be there. There's going to be a uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboot uh, Q&A that's going to be on the Friday mm-hmm. uh, at 7 o'clock I believe with me and Shannon Elizabeth and Jason Muse. Nice. And then on the Saturday it'll be the Clerks uh, Q&A with me and Jeff and that's I believe at 6pm mm-hmm. in the main stage uh, down there so you can get your tickets at galaxycon.com but uh, to follow me specifically it's Brian C. O'Halloran Brian C. O'Halloran on Twitter, Instagram and the Brian C. O'Halloran on Instagram. Good stuff. Excuse me, on uh, Facebook. Okay. Ming Chen, Brian O'Halloran, part of the View Askew universe. Comic book men and clerks coming together for this first edition of the A-game. All right. <laughs> I'm very happy about this. How are you going to top this one, dude? I can't. I'm literally, there we go. I shot my wad in episode high one. Bar. I, I set I, a high right. fucking bar the here, bar is people. here now. From now on, it's like. <laughs> I knew you can do it. You can do it. I believe <laughs> and in listen, well, Rob, you. And listen, Rob, you're podcasting. You can curse now. Shit. Okay, yeah. I feel better now that I said See, that. See, there's yeah, no one in the corner. There's want. no one in the corner of the studio going, like, what the fuck? Yeah, for sure. You're fired. All right, one thing I want to do, I'm going to, with each one of you, I'm going to do okay. some random shots and some stuff that I kind of did whoa, some whoa. digging on. What's random shots? Random shots is just certain questions that I've come up with based on both of your personalities, okay. stuff I've seen on your website, and I love uh, it. Facebook pages, and all that stuff. Why am I now hearing shot, 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 shot. exactly. That's and we have no you, shots to take. I'll take a shot of you. Yeah, exactly. We're going to have to get your license just to get that little segment. You can do 15 seconds without having to pay, right? I think it's something I think like that's that. the ass yeah. cap rule. Uh, I may have to just do five seconds. We'll of look shot, into it. Shot, 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 shot. All right, let's give us some random shots. All right. Ming, and by the way, I, I heard you're looking for a sponsor to do random shots. Yes, I am, as a matter of fact. What are you looking for? Uh, you know, when anybody that has some good liquor, maybe, that would be So you're looking thing. for a liquor sponsor to be a yes. spon- the official sponsor of this segment of every episode of 
the A game with Rob Akampora. Okay. And we're going to call it Random Shots, Random sponsored shots. by Your Liquor, if you know any liquor Fill people. Fill in your liquor here. And it could be every every month, or every yeah. episode could be a different one. We don't care. It's up to the contract they want to sign, from what I hear. I love it. I, I, I it. think I got representation now. This is going uh, look, out for sure. Look, Ming will tell you we've been in the game I, a very long time. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. And All right, shoot it up then. No problem, because you mentioned something earlier about hot yoga. Yes. I only got into yoga about six, seven months ago. So you do yoga. You're, yeah, you I am yoga. doing yoga now. Yeah, you are I, a yogi. I am, nice. I have a yogi. Um, God bless Terry Kelly, who got me hooked on this thing. She actually gave me like four free sessions. Where does she practice out of? Out of uh, Farmingdale, New Jersey. And what's the name of her place? Uh, she's just got a place. She, we do, do it in the bottom of a church in the basement. Ooh, and it's about it's like a dozen, spiritual. Yeah, it's very, it's, it is very spiritual. Do you see God at the end of it? No, or your version God. of whatever God is? Uh, I've seen versions of something. I don't nice. know exactly what it is, but I'm seeing stuff. Awesome. Or do you just pray to God to get you out of the pain for bending so hard? I, I, I was in pain. Oh, oh Lord, okay. just I, make I, this pain go away. It's like every fourth one. It's like, you know, I feel good. I feel good. I feel good. And then I looked at her and Terry, you kicked my damn core sure. ass this week. Thanks a lot. It, my core yes. is, I'm still feeling it here. That means it's working, man. Yeah, I, I do know. But um, do you find one position harder than any other? <laughs> Uh, there, yes. There, yeah, you notice where I was going there. Thank you. <laughs> there, uh, there are many positions uh, that are inc- very painful, but um, anything. Sticking comp- to yoga, please. Anything yes. compromising? Uh, Some of those yoga positions are compromising. Anyway, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Like as I've gotten older, my hamstrings have uh, shortened up. Uh, so uh, my triangle poses have not been as great as they used to be, um, and. Uh, I'm practicing for like ten years, so right. I think the one. Uh, so there's a crow pose, which is pretty I know the difficult. Crow, yeah, absolutely. But there's one even harder, which is called the side crow. And mm. uh, when about five years ago, I could have busted that out uh, pretty easily, and then I got a belly from going to cons and drinking so much. I think yeah. occupational and, uh, hazard. And yeah. so I'm trying to get too into many that. speakeasies. Yeah. <laughs> Le- <laughs> less exactly. yoga studios, more, more speakeasies. speakeasies. Of course. So I'm trying to go into that pose, and I, there's this roll in the way. I'm like, what the hell? And it's that, yeah, that roll of like beer belly in the way. And uh, I'm trying to get that back now because that was uh, that's a fun one. I see a yoga session in our future. I yeah, oh, for go. sure. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we may even document it. Yeah, I, I think that will be a part of the A game at some point it, for so, sure. For sure, yeah. You got a lot of collectibles. I see even stuff around here. Do you have a favorite collectible? Oh man! Um, right now, uh, if you go to a shared universe, uh, hanging up on the wall is a is a life size Stormbreaker prop, and it's not screen news, but it is. It looks like it came from the movie, mm-hmm. and uh, that randomly, some dude called the store. He's like, "Hey, I make props as a hobby. I, I want to present one of uh, one that I've been working on," and, and I'm, I'm like, "Okay, are you local?" It's like, well, I live in Rochester, New York. So he drove six hours down. I'll get out of here. met him at the store. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, I was like, holy crap, this looks like it's from the movie. He mm-hmm. somehow 3D printed uh, a Stormbreaker prop, and it was it was insane. He's like, I really like you to have this. I'm like, this looks like it. Like, you could sell these for, you know, six, seven, eight, a thousand bucks, and people would be waiting in line to buy these. But uh, he... Presented it. We I podcasted with him to get his backstory, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, that thing is that thing is amazing. Nice. And I I think you've seen it. I believe I have actually have held yeah. it even. So it's I become think, a centerpiece. I think I did actually. Everyone yes. who comes into podcast, yeah, they've uh, you know I make the, you know they want. I just didn't know it was your favorite, but I can yeah, understand yeah, I why. Right now, when you I talk about it, crap. it makes total sense. Yeah, I feel worthy when I hold that. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> I looked on IMDb. Yes. Uh, according to that, you're producing a wrestling themed movie. I don't. Oh yeah. I, okay. Well, this was something like, hey, I'm making a wrestling movie you and mike want to be part involved in uh, we're like sure so that's uh, yeah i haven't i don't i haven't really done anything right it's one of those so yeah i take it one step further one of your recent photos that popped up on instagram included a certain wrestler that you bumped into at an event in new york yes mick foley yes yes aka mankind aka cactus jack exactly sure so for you who was your favorite uh, wrestler growing up Oh, man, probably Hulk Hogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was you know, it. Was that era of the WWF before prior pre WWE? Right. And um, yeah, that was yeah. He had his own cartoon. Yes, he did. He was you know he was at the top of his game back then. He what was you gonna do, brother? Exactly. Yeah, eat your vegetables, say your prayers. Like yeah, what you gonna do when these pythons run wild exactly. on you? Listen here, me, inch. Gene. He does it better than I do. Oh my yeah. God, you do that well. Mm. <laughs> one last one, and it is a regional thing. Okay. 
Now, you grew up in Ohio, but you live mostly in Michigan. Did. did the term pop carry over oh, yeah. into Michigan? Oh, that, that's where it started. You, oh, really? Yeah. I see. I thought it started in Ohio. I see, know, I just man. learned that's where, something. That's where it started is in, really? uh, in Michigan. And, uh, at, yeah. So when I got, you know, when I moved out and I was like, I'd like some pop. They're like, what the hell are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, I had a feeling, yeah. yeah. But I, I literally, I have, a, I have a shirt that says, uh, it's it's not soda, it's pop. Like, I have a shirt that says that. So, <laughs> yeah, pop is a regional dialect for, for soda, for carbonated, for Coca-Cola. Right. Or if you go south, they just call everything Coke, even yeah, if you want. See, here it's a, it's a colloquial term for your father. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, pop. I see. Hey, what's up, pop? I see. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, mm. Fair enough. Yeah. I now turn the tables to Mr. O'Halloran. Yes. Well, I don't do yoga, so don't. No, no, no. I'm going to I'm gonna talk off. about some things that we both have done over the Sweet. twenty over the twenty five years of our friendship. We've gone through many different phases of beer. I remember at one point we were drinking the cherry wheat from Samuel Adams religiously. Still love Good it. Beer. Yeah, I still love Great that. Beer. What is the beer that you've been gravitating to most lately? Well, actually, uh, for the last year and a half, I was actually doing more uh, ciders. I was on the side. Magners side. was the one that I. Magners noticed. is yeah. the one I, I really love uh, a lot. Um, uh, a, the the most um, commercially available one I've noticed in restaurants is the Angry Orchard. Yeah. Uh, but ciders from all over are really really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Magners is the one that I really. If they have that, I'm like, yes, give me a pint of Magners right. and stuff like that. Um, when it comes to beers, um, I like to go local wherever mm -hmm. I'm traveling. I mean, Ming, Ming will tell you this as well. Whenever we go out to any type of local hotspot in, in, in the towns that we're doing a con at, mm -hmm. we'll go like, hey, well, what's local first? Right. And, that, and that's then we'll good go idea. there. And, if it's, and to be honest with you, if it's a local cider, that's just like double plus bonus. Yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, the ciders I found just as we get old, as I get older, <laughs> by the way, I just uh, crossed the half century mark. Can you believe it? I know. Whoa. We're all, I know. We're all no, not Ming, but we, I know. Brian and I are part of AARP. But now. I look, Thank am, you very I look much. amazing. Isn't it awesome? He anyway, looks great. Yeah. Um, so uh, I've noticed that ciders work better with my body right now at this age. Um, I hear you. Only because just too many beers just get you mm -hmm. super bloated. And especially when you're on the con circuit, the last thing I need to be is even more bloated than I naturally already look. <laughs> Some people are like, is it even going to do any much damage, to be honest with you? You look fat and bloated already. Oh, stop. I do. I have a big fat Kennedy head. Like the Ted Kennedy, not the good looking Kennedy. Oh, ouch. What? I'm not <laughs> saying that I'm driving you off a pier. Relax. No, I'm <laughs> Since you're talking about the cons, and over the last couple of years you've met so many different celebrities, has there been a moment where you just actually got starstruck that you were surprised to see this person here? Uh, I'm not surprised to see certain people at cons because I read the websites and they tell me oh. who's going to be there. Right. Um, but I do, I do enjoy uh, some of the people who were like fans of myself, which I was like, holy shit, I, I didn't know you were a fan okay, of. Okay, yeah, give me an example of that, please. Uh, John Landis. Years really? ago, I was at a con in Pittsburgh, and John Landis was there uh, for a um, – it was a horror hound con okay. in Pittsburgh, and it was a reunion for Werewolf in London, American Werewolf in London. So it was uh, David Naughton himself and then Griffith Dunn. Right. And so uh, we were setting up on the Friday afternoon. I'm getting my table together, and he came with like, hey, man, I'm a real big fan of yours. I'm like, holy shit, this is John Landis yeah. in front of me. And so uh, he's like, hey, man, I'm a big fan. My son really loves your movies, too. Just want to say I'm so happy to meet you. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm, I love everything you've ever done, oh, and yeah. I enjoy it and stuff like that. And so um, then there's photo ops, as people know, to go to cons. They, they do official kind of yeah. like yeah. propose with the guests Absolutely. and stuff like that. So um, I bought – I knew the guy who was running photo ops, and I said, hey, Froggy, do you mind if I uh, do two photos? Uh, one is going to be my typical, your typical kind of photo with a fan. Right. And then the next is a photo. And I said to John, I said, John, can we do a photo? Uh, we're gonna, I, I paid for two. He's like, okay. Uh, one just like us, like we were normally meeting. And the second one, I want to look like you're fucking me in the ass. He's like, what? I'm totally in. <laughs> so there is a photo of me. I wish I had it here to you could put up on the screen. And it's me like, ooh. And she's behind me like, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he signed it eventually. Where's my $60? And uh, it's been uh, one of my highlights of my collection. That's good uh, so I wasn't starstruck, but as opposed to just like, holy shit, you yeah, actually. Yeah, no, that's great. You've seen me in work. Right. And, and I'm asking you now to take a pose as if you're fucking me in the <laughs> Good stuff. But I guarantee you, right. I should be the only one in the world with a photo like that. Uh, well, I'll give you that one. <laughs> we'll I, unless his own wife and him have well, one. Yeah, that, I, I don't, I don't know his story. extensive really? collection of private porn. Right. We've really cut the gamut of what we're, <laughs> we're yes, topics we here. As a friend of his for 25 years, the one thing I've noticed about uh -oh. Brian is that he's never really been... I, I won't say a fan of reality TV, but it's not something that I think you ever thought about doing per se. Correct. Unquote. But if I were to give you one of two examples, and these are two that are still running right now, you have the choice of 
okay, you're on a one-day adventure with Bear Grylls, and suddenly you have to eat the animal's eye in the middle of this whole thing. Or you wind up on um, uh, First We Feast, and you got to eat 10 of the hottest chicken wings known to man. All right, I'll probably take the... I've eaten other eyes before, so okay. eye, eyeball doesn't mean nothing to me. Like okay, I, it's, literally, I, mean, I was at San Diego Comic-Con this past year... And uh, a friend of mine, a good co- close friend of mine, has friends who live in San Diego who right. do business in Tijuana all the time. Right. And we did Tijuana tacos. Uh, we were at uh, El Frances, I believe it was uh, the name of the place. And um, we, uh, they gave me a sheep eyeball taco. And it was awesome, actually. Okay. And you knew ahead of time that you were getting Yeah, yeah, yeah. They okay. were like, this is eyeball. I'm like, I don't care. Okay. <laughs> it was so good. Like, we had, we had every form of taco and sorts of spicy grilled habaneros and all sorts of stuff. It was really, uh, El Frense is an uh, awesome taco place in Tijuana if you ever get a chance to go to Tijuana. Uh, and it was my first time going into Tijuana. So I was like, all right, we're doing this. We're going <laughs> right. to Tijuana. He's like, yeah, make sure you bring your passport. I'm like, I'm done and done. Mm-hmm. And uh, we went there and it was a lot of fun. And, um, and so that was, uh, eating something like that is not a problem. Ten, the hottest wings ever, you, you know it's going to hit you twice. It's right. the burning of the mouth when you're initially eating it. Mm-hmm. And then ten hours later when you're praying to a God, please just mm-hmm. let it pass through your body without killing you. And I refer to you, Ming, for one second okay. as, a, as a veteran of the podcast industry. Yes. That has got to be one of the most creative ones I've seen. It really is good. First we feast, where they, you know, the celebrities are eating these chicken wings. Oh, and, sure, yeah. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, they've turned in their whole, indust- uh, whole industry. There's a yeah. game show now. There's a whole game and show. And I saw yeah. that, and I just went, okay, would I do that for $25,000? 100000 maybe. Oh, well, now you didn't throw the money at me. Wait, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> uh, Let's back this up. If you throw, throw some the money, money at, at me. You, that's another story. All then right. eating eyeballs is nothing compared to eating hot wings right. with money. Yeah. Now I'm there with money. Now, oh, see, that's another story. See, I didn't throw the game show concept at you. No, okay. you didn't. I know you're But alone. these celebrities that are just doing it for fun, they're fools. <laughs> They should have waited for the game show money. See, there you go. Celebrity edition. One but I've done, a, the only reality TV anything that I've ever done was a road rally race. Yes. Uh, called, I'm glad uh, you're bringing that the, up. The Fireball Run. You can mm-hmm. find it on Amazon. I was on season 10 and 11. Uh, it's uh, about uh, 40 teams mm-hmm. of all sorts of exotic vehicles going 2,000 miles over eight days. Mm-hmm. And you have you don't know where you're, you know the eight major cities you're going to. Right. But you don't know where you're going in between and you don't know what tasks you're giving to. It's like a combination of the movie The Cannonball Run meets the cartoon The Wacky Races. Correct. And and the the the, the CBS show uh, The Great Race. Great. The, 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 uh, yeah. Amazing Race. Amazing, Amazing Race. race. Right. Yes, thank you. So you have a team, and you're given an envelope, and not every team has the same mission, first off. Okay. So following another team is the stupidest move ever, because they may not have the same clue as you have. Right. And so it's a riddle, usually a clue of some sort, to get you to some sort of famous location or some event to get a, a task done, and then they, they, they mark your passport, so to speak, that you've completed and you move on to your you get your next clue and you move on to your next plus there's things called uh, you know uh, bonus missions but some of them are real and some of them are complete wild goose chases just to get you off the main trail and waste time because time is of the essence right. getting to the finish line every day gets you extra points and mm-hmm. stuff like that so if you go to Fireball Run on Amazon Prime uh, season 10 11 I'm part of the, the Queen of Versailles team and mm-hmm. the Queen of Versailles is Jackie Siegel who there was a documentary back in 2011 about um, Jackie Siegel and the Queen of Versailles, her and her husband are building the largest residence in the United States, in uh, Florida, right. outside of Orlando. And so um, I met her through making of another small film with Jeremy London, a short film called uh, Monsters Anonymous. Mm-hmm. And it was through that connection I got involved in that reality TV show. So that's the only touch of reality TV, mm-hmm. besides obviously uh, comic book. Oh, yeah. Yeah, doing yeah. the, yeah, so the, the guest on a, episode. I was right. on a couple yeah. episodes. That was yeah. the bowl, I remember well. the bowling episode. Yeah, uh, bowling, bowling episode. episode yeah. It was the episode where Walt calls out and it's just me and Ming to run the store. Yeah, that was right, a great, exactly. that was a fun episode. <laughs> it looked like it was a blast. Yeah, for sure. One last one, because I know you're a big hockey fan, big Rangers uh, fan, but today is actually the 40th anniversary of a very important day in hockey history. Do you remember where you were when the Miracle on Ice happened? Uh, yes. Um, we, my dad and I were watching it because it was the two of us who were the hockey fans. Right. And, um, this is, uh, 40 years. So we're talking about 1980, 1980. So I was living in Palisade Park, New Jersey at the time Mm -hmm. and we're watching it in the living room. And uh, he was just going nuts because the Russians, you know, people who don't remember, yeah. the Russians were the most dominant team. They were basically a team of professionals. Uh, of, but no I mean, doubt. not just professional. Yeah, this is, by the way, so people don't realize, back then, professional hockey players were were banned from, not banned, but they were just not allowed right. 
because they were being paid. So yeah. it was all literally just people who from the countries who put their skill together uh, to be their national hockey, you know, yeah. hockey league team. Very well said. So um, this is before now that you see all these professionals getting into the game. Right. So the Russians, though, the Russians were like the the juggernaut of oh, all yeah. hockey for many, many uh, Olympics beforehand. And, and I, everybody I, said the same thing. Right. Like, and I these remember, are all professionals. And I remember when Team Russia played at the Garden like about uh, a month before. Right. And they destroyed Team USA. It was like right. you know, it was like 10 to 4 or 12 to 4 or something like that. And you just knew, okay, this could be a rough go for USA just to get a medal. And right. then suddenly, here they are in the game against Russia. Here's the rematch. Yeah. And still nobody gave them a chance. Yeah, and Aruzioni and those guys, they really, yeah. really, really super pulled it off. And uh, I just remember my dad going, this is, you don't understand, this is so amazing. Yeah. And it was. We knew how, how badass that the Russians were mm-hmm. in the day. And they still are to this day. Russia and Canada are mm-hmm. the two teams to beat. But now that they're allowed to have professional right. NHL players be part of their mm-hmm. team, I mean, it's still a level playing field when you think about it mm-hmm. because it's all professional hockey team uh, players from each one of those countries. Mm -hmm. But it's that type of thing where Russia still dominates in that that sense. And then the the next team would be Canada. Mm -hmm. And then lately, like that's why when the American women won it all, and it it was a huge thing. And so uh, I look forward to see this next batch now that, because technically Russia has been banned from Olympic competition, from what I've been told. I think so. So so. it'll be interesting to see how the results work on this one. So we'll see. Uh, Now listen, I'm a Ranger fan, and our... We have three or four Russians on our team, which we love and enjoy. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think <laughs> Russians should be banned from no, playing no, the sport of hockey all. because they, they have in, incredible grit and determination to get things done. And uh, I'm a big fan of the Rangers. Right. And uh, Igor Shishirkin will mm-hmm. be able to uh, carry this team into the future. Amen. Dos bedonia. Yes. And then a special shout-out to a uh, former Olympian who became a Ranger. Mark Pavlich became a very popular player on those yep. Ranger teams back yep, in the yep. 80s. Absolutely. We're coming up to the end of this. I can look by my clock and say we're almost out of time. I know. I love that half hour, huh? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that was a really good idea on my part, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do this in half an hour. Right. You started yeah. at 7.30 and it's 8.35. Wow, a half an hour goes fast. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I mean, All those who bet the over-under and bet the over, you won tonight. Congratulations. Exactly. Yeah. You well, know what? So that could be another segment. How long are you going to go? Uh, you know what? I may have to do some over-unders before go. this even starts. Okay, before we wrap up, um, Ming, thank you. I look forward of to course, doing some stuff course. with you. A Shared Universe Find the website. If you ever wanted to get into the world of podcasting, these are the guys you go to. They will coach you. They will set up everything. That's the other great thing about what they're doing. They will set up everything as far as social media goes as well. So you're getting a really good deal with them. And I'm proud to be a part of the family now. Uh, Welcome to the family, my friend. Absolutely. Always. Brian, 25 years of friendship. Nice surprise. Thank you so much. And I've got one question before you leave. Yeah. Can you talk anything about Clerks 3 at all yet? Uh, sure. I could totally tell you everything. So every here's the whole, whole script. <laughs> oh, look at that time. Oh, it's oh. over. Yeah, no, look, uh, hopefully uh, Kevin is still on the tour with the new Jay and Silent Bob Reboot Roadshow. Right. Uh, that ends next week in New Orleans. Uh, once he's done with that, I'm heard he's going to get working on the new script. Okay. Uh, also, a Mall Rats too mm-hmm. is another thing he's working on. So once he gets done with it, and we, me and Jeff and a bunch of us get the scripts in hands, we go from there. So. Knowing Kevin, this isn't going to be a heavy uh, special effects ridden kind of film. It's right. not an it's not a new Avengers, so uh, maybe we can get start filming by the end of this summer. Who knows? Okay, but I uh, can we plan on you, I, and Jeff doing a sit down in a couple of months then? Yeah, why right. not? Look forward to it. That is the first edition. We got it off the way, and hopefully you will tune in every week via Facebook, the A Game Rob Back and Pour. Be on the lookout for the YouTube page as well, since we're in the video format. It's yeah. the perfect way to go with it. Next week, if everything goes according to plan, we will sit down one on one via Skype with Matt Pinfield, the former MTV VJ. Oh. What? And my former boss, yes. I've been gypped. <laughs> I'll tell him you said hello, by the way. God damn him. <laughs> For me, Shen, for Brian O'Halloran, I'm Rob Akampora. Thanks for being a part of the A-game. These are two guys who brought their A-game. You bring your A-game here next week. Take care. Peace.